Isaiah 9, verse 10 through 12. The bricks are fallen, but we will build with hewn stone. The sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. Therefore, the Lord shall set up the adversaries of resin against them and, uh, and join his enemies together. Listen to this, verse 12. The Syrians before and the Philistines behind, and they shall devour Israel with an open mouth. Hello. We know that the lion of Jeremiah chapter 4 is the attack by Syria. Syria is with Assad and those who will be with them. Assad is the lion coming up from the thicket. And the destroyer of the Gentiles that will soon follow is the bear, which is Russia. The problem with all of this is the church believes that the white horse rider, it for not all of the church, but the vast majority, some of them are starting to come around a bit more. But, and I used to believe this too, until more revelation came to understanding, that they believed it was like white horse rider was, you know, the Syria, the, the pre-trip, right? Like maybe the antichrist typology. The red horse rider is Russia. The black horse is, uh, is the leopard. And then you had the pale horse. That's not how it works. The four horsemen are released from heaven. They're released from heaven. They are not the enemies being released from heaven to dwell into the people. It's, it's the periods of time, the, the ones releasing these events from heaven onto the earth. <clears throat> All right? They're not the individual people. The lion here is the one from Daniel chapter 7. This is Assad who is coming from the north to destroy Judah. It is Assad who is coming. It is Syria coming, not the one attacking the northern part of Israel, but the one that is compassing about will surround and destroy Jerusalem and cause them to flee into other lands to be destroyed, to be killed, and some taken captive. Okay, look at what we see here. We've seen this story in uh, 2 Chronicles 24. It's told to us right here. This is how it starts because this is, this is at the beginning of the 14 years. So what do we see? In 2 Chronicles 24, 23, it says, and it came to pass at the end of the year. <laughs> do you see why we were looking for a year's end connection? The problem has always been where is the Lord God counting from? Well, the Lord God is counting from, we'll come back to this in a second, the Lord God himself is counting from the Feast of Weeks. Shabua is the Feast of Weeks. We have shared this many times in the past that we forgot about. And then recently as well, let me show it to you right here. For those that haven't seen it, Feast of Weeks. All right, guys, it is the Feast of Weeks. Seventy weeks are determined, okay? The Lord God is counting from Feast of Weeks. Where is Feast of Weeks? Taurus. Wait until you see what we're going to break down in some new exciting understanding of in the beginning, right? Because there's two beginnings. It was Christ and the Father. The beginning was Resurrection Day. That was the beginning, and it was in Taurus. It was what we now call the Feast of Weeks, okay? So what do we see in this? Let's go back to 2 Chronicles 24. We see this attack. That comes from the north by Syria. So it came to pass at the end of the year. So what are we seeing now? We've been looking for, you know, New Year of Trees end of year. We've been looking for Nisan, you know, uh, uh, end of Adar to, to start of Nisan as the end of the year. We've been looking for uh, Tishri, right, from Elul into Tishri as the year's end. There were even times in the past 
where we were looking on the Gregorian calendar, 365 days and then year one. We were even looking at April 1st as a year's end because that's what it was under the Julian before they changed to the Gregorian. We've looked at all of these things. And lo and behold, it turned out two years ago, I had already shared on the Feast of Weeks. In fact, it was in that video when the Holy Spirit confirmed the 50 day count. I believe that was the actual video. Yeah, it was that video from the one that the Holy Spirit confirmed that actually had the Feast of Weeks that I had shown was where the year of the Lord was where the Lord God was counting from. And I totally forgot it as time went by. Because if it passes on that year, we go to the next thing that could be a year's end and we go 50 days back. But now we know we can't because it's Taurus. So this is what we're getting at. <coughs> it wasn't any of this year end or that year end. It was to the Lord God, Taurus. Taurus at the Feast of Weeks. That's what the answer was. And I just showed you in Isaiah 9 that we know that it's Syria. And here we are, a piece of scripture we've been teaching on for three years. And it came to pass at the end of the year, because what's the end of the year? The following day is the beginning of the 14 years. And it came to pass at the end of the year that the host of Syria came up against them. And they came to Judah and Jerusalem and Jerusalem and destroyed all the princes of the people from among the people and sent all the spoil of them unto the king of Damascus. For the army of the Syrians came with a small company of men. They must, you see, because Israel's too big. They've got a great army, but their time is up. In their pomp and in their pride, in the stiffness of their necks, the Lord must destroy them. He's not gonna completely wipe them out. He's not gonna completely destroy the land but he must allow his land to rest before he could build his temple. It says, And the Lord delivered a very great host into their hand because they had forsaken the Lord God of their fathers. Hello. There it is. This is exactly what we were showing in Jeremiah chapter 4. 